questions, doubts, and perspectives. A place to listen to their stories and experiences and show them respect and compassion. By doing this, we can build trust and friendship and demonstrate the love of Christ. Jonathan is the pastor of Cerro, a church plant he helped start in Madrid, Spain. He is also the associate director for the Global Mission Center for Secular and Post-Christian Mission. The goal of the center is to better understand secular and postmodern people and to help them live a real experience with God. They've discovered that people who may not feel comfortable in a traditional established church setting are often open to joining a new developing community that is friendly, authentic, and diverse. And today, uh, Spain is the most secularizing, uh, uh, he has the highest secularization ratio in Europe and see up to 60% of the people don't believe in, in God or at least don't, don't practice any religion at all. Sylvia's relationship with God had ups and downs from as far back as she could remember. Based on her childhood experience in a Christian school, she thought of God as strict, but she also questioned if there was more to him. So she started searching. I can't remember what I typed, but one day I was Googling and I found Sarah. And I went there on my own, and to my surprise, I felt really comfortable. I enjoyed the experience, and I started seeing God in a different light. I wanted to open that door again, to let him come into my life again. I went from, I don't believe in you, to, this cannot be a coincidence. He was knocking on my door again. I started looking at him in a different way. I wanted to know him better, to rediscover him through Zero, with no prejudices. This is something I have to thank my church, Sarah, for. She started uh, the relationship with us, and step by step, she got baptized uh, after two years. In Sarah, I feel loved, and that is something absolutely beautiful. To me, this is the main difference. With God, I used to feel judged, but now, to me, God is just love. Sylvia is just one of the people whose life was transformed because of Cerro. While this community continues to grow, they are building a new space to facilitate more people and expand their services to help relieve societal issues. We don't want to, to just open on Sabbath. We want a center of influence that helps people with mental health. A cafe where we are going to sell vegan food and also vegetarian food and the, the, the revenues are going to support this uh, mental health for people who can't afford uh, mental health uh, therapies. Especially in, in Europe and, and I would say for the case of Spain, it's, it's uh, triple the, 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 the case of suicides in Spain after the COVID. Please pray for the members of Cerro as they serve with compassion and kindness. To learn more about church planting efforts such as Cerro, visit globalmissioncenters.org. Thank you for your prayers and support of Global Mission. Happy Sabbath, happy day. I pray that the Lord has been faithful to you. Uh, thank you for joining us again for lesson five, singing the Lord's song in a strange land. Beloved, sometimes it is hard to sing and especially the Lord's song, whereas everything around you doesn't even require you to sing. It requires you to look sad, to, to mourn, to cry, to sleep and not even step out of the house. But this week we are going to see how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Um, I'm joined by my wonderful panel, but before they introduce themselves, I'll ask Ian to pray for us. Sure, let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your goodness, for your love, for your mercies, for the gift of the Sabbath. We say thank you. Um, as we study your word, I pray that you will grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit that will incline our thoughts to issues divine. That as we seek to understand the lesson, singing the Lord's song in a strange land, it will both impact us and change our lives. That through this lesson, we'll be able to meet you and that it will draw us nearer and nearer to you. As we begin, pray that you may be with us till we finish in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, starting from you, just say hi to us. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Ian Otieno. Glad to be here. Karibu sana. Happy Sabbath. My name is Irene Omondi. Feel welcome. Karibu Irene. Good 
evening, Dapi Sabbath. My name is Billy Teno. Pleasure to be studying the lesson together. Amen. So, we do not need to delve any deeper than we have gone so far in the book of Psalms before realizing that the psalmists, when they were writing this book, these psalms, they were not in a very perfect world. It was a world full of sin, full of evil, full of suffering and death. Relatable to us, we too are in an evil world. I think... If you ask someone, they'll say that it is more evil. Uh, every day there's someone who's been murdered. Every day there's someone who's done this or that. And it bro breaks our hearts every day. You feel like, you know what? Lord Jesus, how long? Our memory text is coming from the book of Psalm 137, verse 4, which, which says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Which is this strange land? And what is the Lord's song that we are supposed to, to sing? And how can we even sing it as Christians? Um, we'll go to our Sunday part, the days of evil. And I'll just ask my panelists, each one of them, starting with Billy, to, tell, to just talk to us what I your thoughts on the days of evil. Can we have a perfect character in these days of evil? Uh, thank you, Rumona. Mm -hmm. Before we get even into the days of evil, mm -hmm. my understanding of uh, uh, singing the Lord's song mm -hmm. in a strange land, I have two understandings. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is uh, how can we how can we be perfect in mm. an imperfect world? Mm. Then the second understanding mm. is more personal to mm -hmm. us. How is it post How can we still remain faithful to God mm -hmm. even when bad things happen mm -hmm. to us? So mm -hmm. the bad thing is like you're in a, you're in a. That is what is defined. What I define as like being in a strange land. Like mm. you. I mean, God appears to be unfaithful to you in quotes. Yeah. I mean, things wrong things seem to be happening to you, but then you're still remaining mm. be, to be faithful to Him. You're still prayerful. So. Mm. Those are my two understandings so, mm -hmm. of uh, singing the Lord's song mm -hmm. in a strange land. Mm -hmm. Now, back to your question mm -hmm. on the days of evil. Mm -hmm. uh, when we see uh, at creation, mm -hmm. we had a perfect world. Yes. But as human beings, uh, our forefathers, mm -hmm. uh, Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. they sinned. And they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And uh, as people multiplied in the face of the earth, then we see progressively sin mm. coming into into the world. Mm. And so the days of evil are coming into the world. Yeah. As it was then, even now, mm. we see where a lot of people around us, mm. a lot of things that we are exposed to mm. are uh, defined as evil things. Like people but are becoming continually evil. evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. People are becoming continually evil. So is it possible to be perfect mm. in that environment? Mm. My answer is yes. Mm. Because uh, if you're in Christ, then you're a new creation. Amen. You don't conform into Amen. the world. So I pray that as Christians, mm. we may still be the light of the world, even mm. in the sinful world. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Ian, is it possible for us to have a perfect character in the days of evil? Um, come again. Is it possible for us to have a ca perfect character in the days of evil as Christians especially yeah it's possible it's possible um i my mind has quickly gone to um the book of philippians where paul says you should you need to walk as as sheep amongst wolves and like uh, we i think that is the very essence of um us being in this world mm -hmm. from from the um typical time mm -hmm. israel was placed um as uh, when Matthew would say um, a, a, a city set on a hill cannot be hid, mm -hmm. um, Israel was placed um, strategically to manifest or mm -hmm. to express to the world that had fallen the um, the grace of God. They were they were there to represent the character of God. Mm -hmm. So I think even in this day, um, it's possible and it's our it's our single responsibility mm -hmm. to um, in a world that has departed to walk as sheep amid wolves. Like mm -hmm. we are to represent the character of God. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in, in the world today. So it's possible and it's something that we, should, we, need, we need to be doing. We are representing God, so it is possible for us to remain perfect. Thank you. I hear you. Uh, reading from Psalm 74, verse 18. Remember, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Psalm 74, 18, 22. 
to 22, remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that a foolish people has blasphemed your name, or do not deliver the life of your turtle dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. Or do not be, do not let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O God, plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches you daily. When we read these verses, um, Irene, when we're reading these verses, it's this author or this psalmist is here just complaining a lot and he's tell, not complaining in the bad light, but he's trying to tell God, you know what? Things are happening around me. Evil things, you know, sins are increasing. Like Billy tells us, every day we witness the evil of men continually. It's not like they're even retracting their steps. It's not like they're even pausing. It keeps on con moving on and moving on. From these verses, what what are your encouragement to us who are witnessing a lot of evil, evil around us? My encouragement mm. would be that uh, when all these things are happening, we should not give up hope. We should keep trusting in the Lord because our God is a, a God who is faithful, is a true God. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, he knows that all these things are happening mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the psalmist is telling him to remember, it's like these things have been going on. Mm -hmm. And it's like he just wants God to listen to him, to hear him out. Mm -hmm. So even us, as these things are going on, we should come back to God and ask him to mm -hmm. intervene mm -hmm. because it is only him yeah. who has the power mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And we know that our God only saves us when we come to him. And when we, we are told that when God saves his people, then his name is lifted. Mm. He's counted to be a just mm -hmm. God. So when all these things are happening, we mm. should not give up hope. We should not now join the worldly people mm. in doing these things mm. because we know their end. Mm. We are last, and in our last lesson, we mm. were told that they have an end. Mm. Yeah, mm. and it will soon come. Amen. And so Amen. let us not give up hope. We mm -hmm. are told that do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. So it's just asking God, don't let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. Mm. And uh, mm -hmm. we, they, the writer continues to say that may the poor and needy praise your name mm -hmm. so that in the midst of all these things, may we have a reason to praise God. May we have a reason mm -hmm. to see something coming out of this oppression, mm -hmm. something coming out of this evil world that though it will tarry. We are told that he will come. Mm. It finally tells God, arise, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. The Lord knows that people are mocking him. Mm. The Lord knows that yeah. he's the only one who is able to defend his own. Mm. And so we are faithfully and hopefully looking at him, and we know that he is soon coming to uh, relieve us from all these things that we go through in life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Irene is telling us not to give up and like the psalmist we should just like turn our eyes back to the Lord because that is where our help comes from so we shouldn't join the world in complaining but even if we are lamenting and we'll see the laments that are there as we go on with the lesson we should lament towards the Lord Ian what are your thoughts uh, any further thoughts before we move um, on the Sunday part um, I have a few um, things to say so we are talking about the problem of sin mm. and uh, we are in a covenantal relationship with God mm. and sin has caused a breach. Mm. So it's sin that has compromised mm. the relationship that we have with God, but the grace of God still um, supersedes. So, but my, 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 my thoughts would be on the last paragraph. I'll just read quickly and then give my thoughts. Mm. Um, it's, it says, as today, the same principle existed back then. Our sins, our backsliding, our evils can bring disrepute not only to ourselves but worse on the god whose name we profess our wrong actions can have detrimental spiritual effects on our witness and mission as well how many people have been turned off by your faith 
by the to our, to our faith turned off to our faith by the actions of those professing the name of Christ. So uh, mostly when you commit sin, if I offend my sister here, I look at it as though it's it's high I've offended. But I will give two quick examples. When um when when the prodigal son goes back home, when he plans his speech, says I will arise and go back to my father, and I will say I have sinned before God and before you. If you look at it from a surface level, it's only his father you offended, right? Um, so when we sin, does not only cause harm to ourselves; it also causes harm to the mission we're in. It it uh, when when David had committed sin, the sin of adultery. Uh, years later, when his son, his own son, committed incest, the spirit of prophecy says he was morally incapacitated to speak against that same evil. While he might have been stunned in the past, his act of committing that sin morally incapacitated him to stand out against that sin. So that's the same with us. When we um, trifle with sin, it it takes our mission, it drops our mission of its, you know, then you cannot go out there boldly mm-hmm. and speak against the things that you are. So we should be very careful with um, the, 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 the concept of sin. Okay, thank you, Billy. Uh, just briefly, Ian tells us that um, when we sin, it makes us morally incompa- in, incapacitated to even point a finger and say, what you're doing is wrong. And you I know you're a church leader. Sometimes you might do something and people know it that eh, really did this and that. And this is something that has happened. So should you keep quiet because you did it? Or what should you do? You're not speaking only as a church leader, but also as a Christian. What should you do? Yes, you know I lied. but sh- And you are lying and you can see you are lying and it is causing harm to someone. Should I keep quiet and let it go because, you know, I am a sinner. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. Mm. Uh, actually, one of the reasons as to why we come to fellowship together mm. with fellow believers mm. is so that we can correct one another. Yes. So if you find a, a fellow uh, on the wrong, mm. it's good to correct them mm. with love. Mm. It's good to correct them uh, mm. as a Christian. Yes. And even it applies to us as persons. Mm. When uh, the Holy Spirit still abides with us, mm. then we'll always have that conviction. When you, when you do something wrong, mm. then uh, your, your mind will not be very stable. You'll mm. always feel that I think there's something wrong mm. that I did. Mm. So that means that the Holy Spirit is still abiding in us mm. and it's uh, inviting us into total repentance. Yes. So I encourage all the Christians uh, within and without the uh, New Life SD Church that... Uh, Whenever you find an opportunity to repent of a sin, mm. to correct a brother, mm. then it, the safest time to do so is then it's instant. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we safely move to Monday part. And I'll ask that Irene, you read for us Psalm 41, verse 1 to 4. Psalm 41. Verse 1 to 4. One to four. Mm-hmm. I'm reading from NIV. Mm. Blessed is he who's... Rega- Sorry. Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life. He will bless him in the land and not surrender him to the desire of his foes. The Lord will sustain him on his sick bed and restore him from his bed of illness. I said, O Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Amen. I'm just looking, as you're reading those verses, I'm remembering Jesus at the cross. And even before he got to the cross at the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays and he begs his father and he tells him, you know what, if it is your will, Lord, take this cup away from me. But if it is your will, you know. Um, Sometimes at the death door, uh, we're just trying to look at the sufferings that we go uh, as we go through as Christians. Billy, you are a Christian. You serve in this church, but you are so blessed. Irene, you are a Christian. You serve in this church. You give, you know, but you do not have a child. And you've been praying. You've been in marriage for more than 10 years. It's the same thing to maybe, uh, Ian. You've been here, but your family is broken, you know. And you are faithfully serving the Lord. You are giving all your heart to God. And I'm here just trying to compare our situations to that of Christ on the cross, that he's dying even though some people will still do what? Still sin. So 
And in the light of all these examples that I have given, how can we be Christians and still be suffering? Uh, anyone of us can go first. Um, I will. I will give it. I will give it a trial. Mm. Um, and I will. I think in a previous lesson we said, Job was the quintessence of human suffering. He's mm. one of the people who suffered the most when you were encouraging someone. So I think. The best way to navigate, um, because for sure, uh, mm. before Christ left, he made sure mm. <laughs> the way you live as parents, you leave instructions to your to your children before you leave the house, right? Mm. So before Christ left, he said, um, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So the way to navigate those challenges and still remain um, is to anchor your faith on the right, mm. the right place. Um, so um, Job says, um, when he's been thrown stuff in the center of his trials, he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because his trust is anchored on something mm -hmm. that's beyond what we can see. Amen. Paul would say, mm -hmm. um, Paul would say, I think it's Second Timothy 1.12, he would say, I know, but I know whom, for the which cause I suffer all these things, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I know whom I have believed in, Amen. and I am persuaded that he's able to keep um, everything that I've committed unto him mm -hmm. against that day. So if we anchor our faith on the right person. Mm. The hymn writer says we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure all day. Mm. Bill is rolled, right? Mm. So if you anchor our faith on the right, who is Christ really, our mm. anchor, then despite the things that we're going through, we know that the goal of Christ is not so much to give us a good life here mm. as it is to save us ultimately. Mm. So for us, it's whatever happens, as long as you get me to heaven. Amen. Um, really, you are suffering. You do not have a job. You have a rent arrears. Your brother needs school fee. Someone else is sick. And all these people are looking unto you. Is it okay for you as a Christian to lament to God? Uh, from a human perspective, mm. uh, you will always... Uh... As a Christian, remember. Okay, yes, yes, as a Christian. <laughs> from mm -hmm. a Christian, mm. As a Christian, mm. uh, you know, lamenting to God uh, depends on the attitude in which you lament. Okay. Uh, are you mm -hmm. doing so with are you complaining mm. uh, are you just you know crying unto the lord mm. to help you mm. in prayer i mean when you're doing so through prayer mm. uh, are you even remembering mm. god's leading mm. previously yes. that god will take you through this situation mm. so i think uh, it depends on the attitude in which you are lamenting okay. but it is good to cry unto the lord when mm. you are in need mm. and when you are not in need mm. yeah amen it's okay to cry to the lord when you are in need some of us work so in, like we are working on eggshells around the Lord God. And the writer of the lesson says, At the grave's threshold, the psalmist remembers God's wonders, loving kindness, faithfulness, and righteousness. Psalm 88 verse 10 to 12. Despite his, being, his sense of being stricken by God, the psalmist clings to God. Although he suffers, he does not deny God's love and knows that God is his only salvation. This appeal shows that the psalmist not only knows suffering, but has a an intimate knowledge of God's grace and that the two do not necessarily exclude each other. Like Ian tells us rightly here that Job saw beyond the suffering. He had an anchor that held so much onto the Lord. I'll ask you, are you just seeing within your suffering and giving up on it? Or are you lamenting with the right attitude? Like Billy tells us, it is okay to lament, but to lament with the right attitude. What is the right attitude? Remember the wonders of the Lord. As we move to the Tuesday part, um, where is God? This is a question we ask so, so many times. And our leading verse will be Psalm 42, verse 1 to 3. Irene, I don't know if you are there already. Yes, 42, 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. It reads, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? Amen. Where is your God? And when you read Psalm 63, verse 1, it says that, Oh God, you are my God. Ali will I sink you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. These verses tell us that this is someone who's really, you know, they're really hungering for God. It's like 
you've really prayed this prayer that God is not, doesn't seem to be answering, and you're asking yourself, where is God? Irene, what are your thoughts on the Tuesday part? Where is God? Okay, my thoughts here are, are that uh, life will always be tough, mm -hmm. and especially for Christians, mm -hmm. we have been promised that we will face trouble. Jesus says mm. in this life we will have to face trouble. Mm. But he also reminds us that we should be of good fear because mm. he has overcome the mm -hmm. world. And as uh, my brother was saying, we, uh, Billy was saying that we, we will lament. It's okay to lament. Mm. But lamentation mm. to me is a step of faith mm. that I know that in my lamentation, mm. my God is going to come through mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And we are not going to be exempted from these issues of life. Yes. Actually, when you go up as a Christian, the higher it gets, mm. these temptations will come from all directions. Mm. But woe unto you when you give up hope and you start complaining. Mm. We should look up and to God. Mm. And I would want to say that... Um, when we feel that you are alone, when you feel like God is far away, that is the moment he is so close Amen. to you because he, 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 you have reached to a point of absolute surrender to mm. God and you want him to take over. Mm. And somebody wrote and said that he is more trustworthy and more consistent mm. than a loved friend. Mm. When you feel like he is absent in your life, Life, mm. that is the moment you are, he is there. You know, there are these scenarios when you are bereaved and you don't want to hear any hope, any mm. encouragement from mm. someone, mm. but you appreciate a, a friend who will just come in mm. and sit mm. and you know that he or she is there. Mm. That is the same thing we should be taking uh, encouragement from. When you feel like God is far away, mm. you should know that that is the moment he is right and present with you there. Mm. Though he is not speaking, he is there. He's giving you the warmth. He's giving you the courage to keep uh, forging on because he's a God who cannot leave us. Yes, the feeling of silence may look to, or may seem to be very awkward, mm. but I'd rather trust my heart with him mm. and don't have to hear his voice mm. and just know that he is right there with me. Amen. That is all mm. that I need to know and have as a Christian. Mm. So let us not give up hope. Let us not join the bandwagon asking where this God is. But in that, start counting the many blessings mm. that he has done, mm. the many things he has given you. Mm. Then you will bounce back again. Amen. Amen. Alone on a house stop uh, out of the depth deep mire these are the, some of the images that depict an oppressive situation from which there is no except except by divine intervention um, Ian there are times where I, I think you've asked yourself where is God in all this where is God when the innocent are suffering where is God when kids are self uh, victims or collateral damage in a war that is doesn't seem to be ending. Why is God when we have called on him to heal a cancer patient, we've even fasted and prayed. Why is God? What can you tell us about that? Um the the fastest answer I would give is he's in the same place he was when his son Amen. was nailed on the cross. Amen. But mm. um to just piggyback on Irene's point, um, it's, in, it's interesting to note that despite the fact that the Samis is complaining about God's silence, they do not stop mm. praying. Mm. You know, today you probably, we live in a generation where if I, if I reach out to Billy once and, uh, you know, we even have mechanisms of knowing that he's seen my text and not responded, mm. right? Uh, if, I, if I do that once or, or, or twice, twice, I'm changed, like, ah, that's, yeah. that's it, right? Mm. So probably cut them off. This 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 modern, this... this <laughs> Is this you contemporary contemporary <laughs> concepts of cutting people off? Mm. Um, and sometimes I think we even led to apply the same to God. Mm. I, I pray to that God of yours. Ah. You know, we're in a generation of a quick fix of mm. you know, I text you, you respond while we I'm typing, good. you're typing. Mm. <laughs> but I think um it's interesting to note that while Whereas God is silent, he complains about God's silent, he continues to um, to pray, right? Mm. Because he's sure that God is there. And I think if there's something that's important to note is um, the fact that God is silent does not mean that he's not listening. Mm. So two very different things. Mm. The fact that God is silent, according mm. to you, mm. does not mean that he's not listening. Mm. Anyway, back to the sufferings that make you question where God is. Um, Christ was in the earth for that number of years, he had a ministry for three and a half years. Mm. 
there's people he raised from the dead there's mm. people he healed mm. there's people he did not mm. right um uh i think anything that christ does or that god does mm-hmm. in a previous lesson we've been told it's at a time at his time amen uh not our time even mm. when we when you want to invoke god's justice on the on the wicked we should not we should not look at it from our timeline mm-hmm. he's going to do it he's going to um judge the wicked and execute his his judgment at his time at a time that's uh, convenient to him mm-hmm. and i think a concept that this is not anywhere but a concept that i've come to accept is for the things that we pray for like now the resurrection or the healing of mm-hmm. the sick mm-hmm. um he does it at a time that's best for him mm-hmm. and to the glory of his mm-hmm. kingdom mm-hmm. all these things when you look at them from the grand scheme of things then you realize that people did not resurrect because i think he looked at it and was like how is raising lazarus how is it going to be a benefit to my kingdom is it going to make anybody believe when christ speaks to the woman at the well he says i have never disclosed my true identity to anyone mm. but as i look at you and i see the potential um the evangelistic dividend so to speak of disclosing myself to you then i'm mm. going to tell you actually i am the messiah mm. so we need to look at all this is again back to our previous point to look at all these things from the light of eternity and the overall glory of god Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's a very I'd say a very comprehensive understanding or rather even answering the question of where is God? And when Ian was starting to answer us he says that he's where he was when his son was on the cross. So he's still there. His silence does not mean he's absent. When we move to the Wednesday part, has his promise failed forevermore? And Billy, I'll ask that you read for us Psalm 77 verse 1 to 6. Okay, before I read that, is okay. it okay for me to comment on yeah, yeah. where is God? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, the question where is God, mm. that uh, we as Christians ask ourselves mm. when we are in need, mm. I find it not to be appropriate in the sense that you know when you're asking where is but god but it is just a question we are yes, asking yes. we are uh, suffering billy <laughs> yes uh, that's right mm. they don't I, I say that is uh, we are trying to examine mm. where is the presence of god and we know that god is love is constant to Amen. us so i think the question we should be asking ourselves mm. is where, where are, are we, we? Okay. yeah where because mm. in most cases you find that uh, mm. it's us who have wandered away from god but And, and then, there's the question yeah, of the innocent. I get that. <laughs> and then uh, mm. the second part, mm. in the case of innocent, mm. uh, as you're saying, mm. uh, what is your response? What is your reaction to mm. when uh, you see him, when God seems not to be around? Mm. Uh, I like what uh, the psalmist says, that uh, when God seems not to be answering our prayers, mm. and we're still constantly praying and we're suffering, uh, we should ask ourselves, what are we supposed to do during this period when okay. we are waiting? Mm. Uh, there are two things that uh, the lesson writer gives us mm. towards the end of that uh, of Tuesday part. He says that uh, the occasions of God's silence cause the psalmist to examine, examine themselves. themselves. So at that point when uh, God seems not to be answering our prayers, mm-hmm. then we also need to take time to examine ourselves. Exactly. And secondly, he says, and to and to seek God, but with confession and humble petitions. Mm-hmm. So when God seems not to be answering our prayers mm. it's a time for us to examine ourselves Amen. try to ask yourself normally mm. when i find myself in mistakes or when i find myself in uh, in uh, difficult situations mm. i try to ask myself how did i get myself here because yeah. some of these situations mm. it's because of maybe our human mistakes because mm. we suffer the consequences of our actions mm. Mm. so sometimes let's always be in the bit biz- okay all the time let's always be the business of asking ourselves mm. examining ourselves how okay. did we find ourselves in this mm. situation is it because of a decision that i took mm. uh maybe some years or some mm. weeks ago and then uh, with humble petitions let us seek god and then you answer so that is the attitude we need to Thank exhibit you. when mm-hmm. god seems not to be mm. uh, near us Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just before we go to the Psalms, you've just made me remember. Sometimes even our prayers, maybe you could be praying for that job and your motive is wrong. <laughs> your motive is to prove to Ramona that even me, I can have that job. You could you could be praying for for money, for example. 
maybe this money, the motive is wrong. So maybe you also, like Billy is rightly telling us, is it's the time to sit down, have a meeting with yourself, and just search your heart. Ask the Lord to help you search your heart and put your motives into light and you'll see that the question is where are you and the question is not where is god thank you billy so we move to wednesday psalm 77 verse 1 to 6. okay Mm -hmm. Uh, psalm 77 from verse 1 to 6 i'm Mm -hmm. reading from the new king james version Mm -hmm. it says i cried out to god with my voice to god with my voice and he gave ear to me in the day of my trouble i sought the lord My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart. And my spirit makes diligent search. Amen. The question that I'd ask Billy, not Billy, but Ian, has God changed? And can God possibly betray his covenant? <laughs> I, will, I will read Psalm 89, mm-hmm. 33 and 34 okay. in response to the question. Psalm 89, 89 yeah, 33 and 34. Okay. Probably somebody can read as I respond. 89, 33, and? 34. Nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant, I will not break, nor alter the word that goes out of my lips. God has not changed. The only thing that can change, the only thing like Isaiah says, mm. um, God's hand is not short that it cannot heal, neither is here that it cannot hear. But the only thing that separates us from God, like Billy was saying, when mm. um, where are we? You know, when he comes, he asks Adam and Eve, where are you, right? So the only thing that can separate us from God is our, our sins or our iniquity. So God has not changed. God's faithfulness is forevermore. Amen. Amen. Irene, has his promise failed forevermore? His promise has not failed forever. Mm. We are told that his promises are yes and amen mm. in Christ Jesus. Mm. So that should give us hope mm. and that should keep uh, make us keep looking up into him for mm. his salvation. Mm. Uh, the reason why this psalmist is here lamenting is because he has seen God da- do so many things in the past, mm-hmm. some of which he even recorded, mm. you know, like saving the Israelites mm. from captivity, and mm-hmm. he has done so many things, you know, fighting for them. Mm-hmm. He's being the warrior, being mm-hmm. the one who mm-hmm. takes care of his children. Mm-hmm. So when he looks at his conditions mm-hmm. and feels like God has abandoned him, mm-hmm. God is no longer uh, mindful of his condition. Mm-hmm. It's just because he knows God has done so many things in the past. Mm-hmm. And so when God is silent and not taking charge over his situation, he's, there is a, feel, a feeling of abandonment mm-hmm. and uh, that cannot uh, lead us to now trying to cast God, trying mm-hmm. to feel disappointed. Mm-hmm. All we need to do is just wait up him mm. and he will show up amen wait upon him and he will show up billy has his promise failed forevermore uh no mm-hmm. uh, simply because i think uh what the lesson writer also wanted us to understand mm. uh, is that uh certainly mm-hmm. even if uh you are waiting upon god mm-hmm. to intervene on a certain aspect in your life mm. uh, if you examine your life previously mm. there are instances when god mm. has been faithful mm-hmm. and so even uh, the psalmist uh, is saying that i call to remembrance my song in the night i meditate within my heart and mm. my spirit makes diligent such mm-hmm. that's psalm 77 verse 6 mm-hmm. so even as you are trusting on god to deliver on a promise mm. it's important for you to remember his faithfulness in the past and that will continue to give you hope that even this one Mm. i know he will deliver and if he doesn't deliver that Mm. then he can only give you something but i don't encourage myself and my friends that Mm. if there's something you're praying about Mm -hmm. and god has not answered it in Mm. your human way Mm. god cannot uh, deny you something which is good for you exactly what that means is that god is calling you into Mm. a higher level Mm. sometimes when let's say you miss a job with a company x Mm. uh and uh, you feel frustrated. You feel frustrated <laughs> and you think maybe you're not qualified enough. So maybe mm. the next assignment you're applying for, maybe a lesser role, mm. when actually God is asking you to Apply go higher. Yeah. So mm. I pray that that is the attitude in which you may 
mm. approach God. God cannot deny you something mm. and give you less. God can only give you more. Thank Amen. You. Amen. So when next you pray for something and doesn't happen, maybe you look, look at it the way Billy is telling us. God wants something bigger, better for me. And we'll continue. It will strengthen us. Don't forget the things he has done for you in the past. We move to the Thursday part. Let the righteous be tempted. And I'll request that someone read for us Psalm 37, verse 1, and also verse 8. Anyone there? Okay, Psalm 37, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Amen. Uh, so we'll also read Psalm 49. 49, 49 5 to 7 says, yes, yeah. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? When the iniquity of my hills shall compass me about. Um, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give God a ransom for him. Mm. Like from these Psalms and even Psalm 94, 3 to 7, Psalm 125, verse 3, there's some struggles that this psalmist is, or these psalmists are facing. Uh, they are just lamenting on the current prosperity of the wicked and the challenge that this fact poses to who? The righteous. Uh, you are in your office space, for example, and you hear someone is saying, I just need what? Facility. Facility, uh, if you need to any facilitation fee, yeah, I realize that that's the new name for corruption. So, hey, we are even having nicer names for sin. We are not calling a spade a spade, we are calling it a big spoon. So, and this person seems to be building houses, Billy, for example. He's your age, but he's already. He's established, he's driving a, the latest Range Rover, he's having the latest iPhone, and you are here, you are trying to serve the Lord, <laughs> and you're asking yourself. And this person doesn't seem to be caught, actually it doesn't seem like he'll be caught anytime soon. How are you as a Christian supposed to respond to that? That the wicked are prospering, but the righteous are here, it seems like they're diminishing day in, day out. Uh, how I respond to that is mm. uh, one. I think first, as as a, as a Christian, even as a human being, mm. you need to define what prosperity means to you. Okay. So it needs mm. to be right with you. What is prosperity? Mm -hmm. uh, what is success? Mm. Uh, so much so that uh, if you attain those milestones, then mm. you you are successful. Okay. So once you have defined what prosperity mm. means to you, mm. then it could be, it's easy mm. to move forward in mm. the sense that. Uh, when you find people to be uh, the wicked mm -hmm. and through and scrupulous means, mm -hmm. they're trying to attain the wealth of this world, build mm -hmm. big houses, mm -hmm. drive big cars. Mm -hmm. uh, those things are not bad, mm -hmm. but uh, are they the things that uh, you spend your time meditating upon? Are mm -hmm. they the things that, uh, define, that your define your success? Mm -hmm. Uh, is there something else? I mean, where do you find fulfillment? Mm -hmm. So I think as a Christian, we need to put that into the correct perspective mm. that uh, what is prosperity to us mm. uh, but far from us that as well mm. uh, once you have the correct definition of success mm. then you will also understand that uh, the wicked appear to succeed mm -hmm. in, uh, in appearance but not in reality yes. because uh, at the end of the day mm. then you know how the battle will end mm. so they appear their success has to they appear to succeed in reality in uh, appearance but not in reality mm -hmm. and uh, if you continuously look at their lifespan mm -hmm. then you find that uh, it doesn't end well yeah so mm -hmm. i think as christians we need to define our prosperity and our success in the correct context and in the mm -hmm. correct, how god himself will define it for us mm -hmm. then secondly we need to patiently wait upon the lord mm -hmm. and then uh, understanding that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes challenges will come mm -hmm. uh, along our way and they are not removed from us mm -hmm. as Christians, then we will be invited to be patient mm -hmm. and uh, celebrate mm -hmm. as we get things mm -hmm. in the correct manner. 
uh, things that God approved Amen. of. Approve of, yes. Amen. How do you define your success? That is the question Billy is asking us. How do you define your success? Is success this money? Is success this big cars or anything? They are not bad things, but how just do you define your success? Uh, Irene, why do the weak? Wicked seem to be prospering. <laughs> the wicked seem to be prospering because, as Billy mentioned, mm. their success is based on these worldly things. Mm. Yeah, so when I am driving my big car, I am successful. And uh, the question you should be asking yourself what did this person do or how did he acquire this, mm. the world to buy this? Mm. So when we look at all these things, the worldly thing, you know, the Bible says we should not love the world and the things that Amen. are in it. Because when we start loving them, then it means that we are worshipping mm. and we are not worshipping God. Mm. So we should not get to a point where we start looking at how, how the wicked are prospering. Mm. Um, the wicked, we, we are told in, in the, 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 by the psalmist that they not only prosper, but at times... They also despise mm. us openly, and that is when they even try to ask us, where is your God? Mm. They go further to yeah. even oppress you mm. in their mm. wickedness, mm. in their good mm. life that they are enjoying. It's because there is no fear of God in them. Mm. But for us who are in God, for us who know that our God is for sure there, mm. Job says that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. That even though I pass through all these things, I know a day is coming mm. when he will vindicate me. Mm. When he will be able to prove to mm. these wicked people mm. that there was a God in heaven. Amen. Yes, so let us not give up hope. Mm. Let us not uh, try now to want to join the wicked and try to ask them the shortcuts. How are you doing this? Mm. Can we join you? Mm -hmm. Can I be the one doing mm. this so that you give me mm. a commission? Mm. Not knowing that their end is coming. Amen. Yes. Amen. Ian, um, I know you are the youth leader, so I'd ask you to get into a camera and boldly speak to our youths who are seeing that I am 25 and my fellow is 25 and they are maybe a socialites on the Instagram, on the social media, and they seem to be making millions, you know, YouTube, they are making a lot of millions. Then there is me here who's diligently waking up at 7, has a 7 to 5 p.m. job, and my salary is even a drop in the ocean for them. Like, please speak to such people. Um, like I said before, and I will say that again, so in my closing thoughts, um, the Lord has not promised mm -hmm. to prosper us. It's a good thing. Um, I know he's provide is promised to you know um give us means mm. uh, but the goal of heaven really is more to save us ultimately mm. than to prosper us here Amen. so much so that if you have to if that's the lot that's been chosen for you mm. um at the expense of um, there's a quote that says, um, in the future life, the mysteries that have here perplexed us will be made plain. Mm. And then we shall see that some of our seemingly unanswered prayers yes. have been amongst our greatest Amen. blessings. Amen. Uh, in that same book elsewhere, it says, we will not, uh, if we knew the end from the beginning, mm. we would not choose to be led otherwise mm. than Christ is leading us now. Amen. So when the veil will be pulled back, we will see that all these things are working towards our overall goal mm. of salvation. Amen. Yeah. Our overall goal of salvation is what God is working towards. We are coming to the tail end of the discussion, and I'll ask my panelists, so is it possible to sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Starting with you, Ian. Um, our greatest comfort in sorrow mm. is to know that God is in control. Amen. And so if you know that God is in control, mm. um, whatever happens, mm. our our the things happening around us will not influence our relationship with God. Our relationship with God will be constant, and we will probably say, like Job, though he slay me, yet will I will I trust him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Irene. Is it possible to sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Yes, yes, it is very possible, mm. and this is a wake up call for all Christians mm. that we are able to sing the Lord's song in mm. all circumstances. Mm. And like Paul and Silas, remember mm. when they were in jail, mm. they sang and 
things happened. Mm. The, the, the jail was open mm. and in that many people came to know Christ. Amen. So in your situation, mm-hmm. in your circumstances, mm. give God the glory. Mm. Count your blessings. Amen. Name them one by one. Mm. Thank God for the many areas he has helped you through. Mm. Then through that, you mm. will be ministering to somebody mm. who may not know mm. where to turn to for help. Amen. Amen. Billy? Yeah, it is possible for us to sing uh, the Lord's song in a strange land Mm -hmm. only if we allow God himself to let us. Mm -hmm. It's actually him who can make us sing Mm -hmm. his song in a strange land. Mm -hmm. So I pray that we may submit to God Mm -hmm. uh, each and every time, Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the situations, because all things work for the good of those that love the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The panelists have said powerful and encouraging words, not their words, but words that we can find in the word of God and the spirit of prophecy. I'll read for us a, test, a, a quote from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 577 to 579. It says, Summon all your powers to look up, not down at your difficulties. Then you will never faint by the way. You will soon see Jesus behind the cloud, reaching out his hand to help you. And all you have to do is to give him your hand in simple faith and let him lead you. As you become trustful, you will, through faith in Jesus, become hopeful. You know, when God seemingly looks seems to have hidden his face from you. He's so quiet. You've been praying. Even as we examine ourselves, like we have been encouraged by this panel, we should not undermine the efficacy of prayer. These are occasions that caused the psalmist to examine themselves. Recall God's past saving us and seek God with confession and humble petition. You cannot become proud and say, God, I have prayed to you so many times. Now I'm tired. I, this Christianity thing does not work. Other than let us face God in humility and seek him in all his righteousness. It's been wonderful doing this study and I know that the Lord will reach out to you and he will help you. And I know you've been taught of the Lord. And just to close, I'll ask Billy to please pray for us. Okay, let us uh, bow our heads for a prayer and close our eyes. Almighty and everlasting Father, thank you for reminding us of your words this morning. Almighty Lord, I pray that you may teach us, that you may make us sing a song in a strange land. That uh, in situations where we find uh, challenges in our most pressing moments, that you may still remain faithful unto you. In the presence and in the midst of our non-believers who are our colleagues at work, who are uh, staying around us, I pray that we may still prove to be faithful unto you. Oh Lord, I pray that as we get into the other programs of this Sabbath, that your presence may still be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.